Welcome to The Law, Your Money, and You. I'm Roberta Sapphire, an attorney in Sharon. And I'm Camille Barron, a financial coach, also here in Sharon. A few months ago, we had a guest, Paul Izzo, who talked with us about employment law. And today he's going to be back with us to continue the conversation. Right. Paul Izzo is, besides being an employment law specialist, does many other things. And he has a show on cable TV called yes, Sports Nuts. And a th about a month or so, he had this big beard, which he <laughs> shaved off for our show, <laughs> so not to distract anybody. But welcome, Paul. Thank you for coming back. You know, the last show was so fascinating, and we <clears> got <throat> so many emails mm -hmm. saying, bring, bring them back, bring them back. So well, thank you. That's very kind, and I'm glad the, the viewers enjoyed it. Today, the subject will not be quite as much fun as the first day. Uh, but hopefully uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, employment law today. So, Paul, why don't we start with a quick review where we were and where we left off up okay. until Okay. Uh, the first time I was on your program, and again, thanks for having me on, we talked about uh, the process of being hired. Uh, it's always a very positive experience. Uh, someone gets a job. They, it, it's, a, it's a new, exciting opportunity, and we all enjoy that. And many of us experience it on a regular basis. Um, what we're going to talk about here today is termination, and that's the point at which you lose your job. Important w in connection with termination is to remember that at the time you're hired, it's a good idea to make sure you have all the papers. Um, sometimes people sign things when they're hired, and they don't think about it. They're so excited to get the job that the employer says, sign this and sign that. It's be almost like being at a house closing, where whatever they put in front of you, you sign. Right. Can you, don't you give us an example of what they might be signing that they might not know? All right. Um, very typically, employers will have somebody sign a document that says that, uh, they, that if the employee leaves the company for any reason, even getting fired or leaving voluntarily, um, they're not allowed to compete against their prior employer. That's mm -hmm. a non-compete agreement. Mm -hmm. But we see that all the time. Mm. And as under Massachusetts law, and there's even recent cases, very recent cases in this area, so long as the non-compete agreement is reasonable in time, a year or so, and reasonable in scope, in other words, it doesn't say you can't go to work anywhere for anybody, but it's narrow, say, your industry that you're in or your area of specialty. Uh, miles, that, so many miles. Uh, yeah. Yep, geographic That's scope correct. is also yeah. considered. Um, then uh, that agreement will be enforceable. Even in Massachusetts, which is a comparatively liberal state when it comes to employment law. So uh, at the hiring phase, you should be, ex as excited as you might be, you should be thinking about, if I do leave this job, um, what will my rights be? What, does the company have a severance agreement with me going forward? Does this, uh, in other words, if I leave, are they guaranteeing me some payment? Mm -hmm. And some people think they have a severance. I recently was asked by a client to look at a contract that was very confusing about what the employee's severance package was. If the employee had had an attorney review it at the beginning of the relationship, we might have been able to clear it up then. But what kind of job is it? Because most people, when they get hired, don't have an attorney looking over their employment contract. And, and if they did, I would think the employer said, who wants to hire <laughs> this one? He's already setting up mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to leave and sue us. <laughs> right. Well, you're correct that the average person not only is unlikely to hire an attorney, but probably doesn't need one. Uh, but if you're being asked to sign something that gives up rights, for example, you're not allowed to compete. Or if you're agreeing to a certain amount of severance uh, in a contract, you'd be wise to have an attorney look at it. It's a half hour of the attorney's time. Most attorneys, or a lot of attorneys, will do that work even for free uh, as a courtesy, just to look at something quickly. Um, so even at the beginning stage of being hired for a job, you're wise to think about the remote possibility that you would not uh, have the job in the future. The fact is, most people have uh, over a dozen jobs in their lifetime, as hard as that is to believe. It wasn't always that way, but uh, that's the way it is in today's economy. 
when yeah. someone is terminated, is there a process that someone can go through <coughs> to get through it on a rational level rather than to, to use emotions and, and overreact to things? Well, the first thing, uh, if the termination is a surprise, which it is for most of us when we get the news, um, it's very natural to be angry, to be hurt, to engage in some kind of typ behaviors typically associated with grief, which would be bargaining with the employer, what if we do this, um, or being defensive about it. Um, if, if the employment decision is final, the best thing that the employee can do is stay silent and ask more questions than they answer. Don't they have to give you, like, notice where you, you write it down and they write it down and you have to sign as employee, I did this wrong and that? Do they no. have to do that in Massachusetts? No. Under Massachusetts law, there is no requirement that a specific process be followed in connection with termination. What we typically see is someone will get called into a human resources office or into their boss's office and there usually will be two people present, so there's a witness, and someone will say in very blunt terms, your employment is ending, effective either today or at some point in the future, and very often the employee will be given a document to sign or to review and sign at some point in the future. At that point, the employee should ask questions. Why am I being terminated? What is the basis of this? The employer is not obligated to answer that question. I, I, I was under the impression Massachusetts is an at-will state that it they is. just let you go, which right. really isn't uh, fair in a way. Well, you know, under Massachusetts law, an employee can be terminated, and we talked about this in the first program, mm -hmm. for any reason or no reason, but not an illegal reason. So an employee, for example, couldn't be terminated for being female or for having a disability that could be easily accommodated, or for coming out as a gay person. And these are the kind of things we've seen people get fired for. Discrimination. Those forms of discrimination. Wasn't there a recent case uh, about Walmart where, uh, what was it, all females sued them for female discrimination? Mm -hmm. And uh, Walmart, I think, won. Yeah, okay. But well, there's are you familiar with that? Yes. That the, it's a... It's a, a it's a little more complicated than that, Roberta. What happened in the Walmart case was a group of individuals got together and accused Walmart of ga engaging in practices that were discriminatory against them as a group, in a sense. And what was litigated to the Supreme Court was the question whether you could bring sort of a group discrimination case to the Supreme Court instead of requiring each person to go and make the claim against Walmart as an individual. This was a class action they were filing, right? Correct. And what the Supreme Court said, more or less, is that we really can't allow people to gather together and sue employers because the law prohibits uh, discrimination against individuals. And it might have been the case that Mary was discriminated against, but not Susie. Mm. And so Walmart, in a sense, won the case. The case is going to go on. There's more to be litigated there. Um, but it, it was more or less a, a defeat for the people who wanted to bring major class action suits. Yeah, then and, they and could have joined people from exactly, everywhere so else and it would have yeah. snowballed. Oh, One thing that happens a lot when people are terminated is this confusion about how much money they're entitled to. Uh, under Massachusetts law, an employee should be paid on the day they're terminated all the money they're owed. So even if you're normally paid, say, the end of the month or the 15th, if you're, if you're terminated on the 8th of the month, they should pay you then up through the date of your termination. What about vacation pay if they haven't taken the vacation yet? Under Massachusetts law, if your company has vacation pay, and they're not required to, mm. but if they have it, you're entitled to get it on the day you're terminated. And that would also apply for holiday pay. So if, if you get terminated and you don't get your money... What holiday, though? A holiday that's coming up or a holiday that passed? Um, I mean, well, it depends on whether worked. or not they're being paid going forward, but more or less a, a, a past holiday day that they were entitled to pay for. What if you have a payroll service and the payroll service comes out that every two weeks? How is... 
how is the employer supposed to pay the employee uh, without taking out the, the Social Security in that if it goes through? Well, what I've seen, it's a good question, what I've seen in those situations is the company just writes a check, figures out what the employee they is owed. get rid of them. Well, oh, that's God. the law, <laughs> is they, they're, really? they're required to pay the employee. If they don't do that, they violate something we, we call the Wage Act. And uh, they can get in a lot of trouble and mm -hmm. fines and, and treble damages and so forth. Now, what if they're letting them go because the fellow was drinking on the job and caused a lot of damage in the building, the, the glasses broke, they did $1,200 worth of damage, and yet they're owed 300 in, in pay? Well, what happens there? Well, uh, it's an interesting question. What you're talking about there is a situation where um, you're trying to set off what the employee gets oh, okay. by deducting some amount for the damage, I would say the employer would be taking a risk to withhold that money. Mm, I agree with uh, that. I the better practice for an employer is to pay the employee what they're owed as wages and then make a claim against that employee for the money that's owed. Of course, if they'll they, never get it. But, but you at could least take them to the small know. claims court or something yeah. like that. But uh, <laughs> if you're an employee, you really should be getting all the income to which you're entitled well, up to the, the uh, termination date. Uh, Paul, if an employee is terminated, what kind of rights do they have to have access to their employee or personal files that the employer oh, is holding? Under Massachusetts law, an employee should have access to all of his or her personnel files. In fact, in Massachusetts, there's a new statute which says that any time the employer puts anything in the file, the employee should be notified, anything of a negative nature. So the employee, employers sometimes will slip something into the employee's file, not tell the employee. And in some states, um, I recently had a case in North Carolina, uh, employees aren't even entitled ever to their personnel files. In Massachusetts, they are, and in Massachusetts, they're entitled to get um, uh, notice anytime anything negative puts in. Now, you, that raises another interesting point, which is that um, let's say that you feel like you've been discriminated against or you were fired in, in, for an illegal reason. It's not likely to be proved or disproved by what's in your personnel file. Um, that tends to be very bland, safe information. Where the meat, you know, the sexy stuff is going to be found is in the emails and day-to-day -day things that go on at work. And a lot of people make a mistake of not keeping those things. So let's say that you, you join a job on March 1st, and on June 1st, your boss hands you a note, great job, you mm -hmm. did a great job mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. You should keep that. Mm. Keep it in your file. Date it, make a copy of it, and keep it. The employer's under no obligation to keep a copy of it. They may not even, they may innocently not do that. Mm -hmm. may, it may be a handwritten note or an email they send. They don't keep the email. Um, I was given that advice when I started my career in my first law firm. And I kept every single compliment or criticism that I ever got as a lawyer for 10 years until I went into a, uh, an, another firm. Mm -hmm. um, and when I left, I, I took it with me because it just became a habit. And I think it's a good habit for any employee in any job if you get any kind of praise or criticism to have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. now, That's an excellent idea. Right. When, now, when they, when they say to you, you're being terminated because you didn't do a good job. Well, then how come I have 13 emails here claiming that I had did a terrific job? Um, it, it's a little thing. People think, well, I'm never going to lose my job, so why do I have to print this email out and keep it? But again, you should always be thinking ahead to the possibility that you might have a breakup later on, and what are you going to do to, to stay Well, on that case? point, let's say that the employee has done that, and they have a lot of positive... Uh, praises in emails or any other conversations, um, and they get to the situation you're describing where they're being terminated, aside from whether it's legal or not, it shouldn't be a surprise. Any employee who's terminated for poor performance should already know that they haven't been performing to expectations. I Otherwise wish I, I could agree with you. Yeah, I, they, I, should. I, they should. They, they should. Well, they should, Well, from the employer's perspective, they should. In other words, the employer, if it's doing their job, should be reviewing the employee and letting them know they're not doing a good job. But they're not legally obligated to do that. An employee, you can legally hire someone and watch them fail. 
there's no obligation to to go in and say, hey, uh, Joe, you, it's, it's not working out. You've got to get yeah. better. Um, what I have seen very recently with a client is somebody terminated for, for poor performance that had no notice that that was going to happen. Yeah. None yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. They had gotten consistently positive reviews. Oh. They had gotten praise from their boss. They, I, I spoke to coworkers. There was no... So, so what? Nothing what, on the horizon. What was the real reason, or was the real reason? Well, I can't discuss promise. that case because oh. <laughs> it, it, the resolution of the case oh. uh, was such that I can't really comment on was it. Was the employer within his or her rights in that situation? Well, an employer again is not <laughs> obligated legally to give anybody notice that they're not doing the job. They'd be wise to do that. Oh, sure. Um, so from the employer, you folks out there that are employers. If you don't review your employees on a regular basis, if you don't let them know where they're failing, if you don't let them know where they need improvement, you're much more vulnerable to a claim of discrimination if all of a sudden, right. say, you let a 45-year-old single mother go and she says, you're discriminating against me, and you say, well, you weren't doing a good job, but you don't have any proof she was doing the Yeah, well, job. Some, sometimes what you do is you ask the people, how do you think you're doing? And you'll be surprised that somebody thinks they're doing fantastic. Meanwhile, they're the worst nightmare. <laughs> as, as a great person once said to me, they're either unwilling or unable. Which is it? Yeah. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Yeah. A couple of interesting. interesting. <laughs> a couple of, um, I know you guys like to talk about things that are new and exciting. And two areas of the law that I think are, are really going to be cutting edge in this area. One is um, there's, a, there's a law called the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. GINA, G-I-N-A, oh, which okay. is basically what it's, what it's getting at is a situation where an employer might discriminate against an employee because of their genetic history. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, if an employer were to get wind that um, a woman, for example, has a history of breast cancer in her family, the employer might think, oh, this is somebody I don't want to take a chance with. She might be out for an extended period of time. Uh, we may have a, a medical insurance may take a big hit, and they might let her go. So the, the law is that you're not supposed to ask the employee anything that might lead to the information being come known to the, become known to the employer about the employee's genetic history. Where it gets tricky is this is the kind of stuff people talk about in the workplace. A woman comes into the office and says, oh, I'm really sad today. What's the matter? Well, my mother has breast cancer, and my two aunts died of breast cancer. So now the employer knows about it <coughs> yeah. innocently. Mm -hmm. um, and so now what do they do with that information? So the law does give an exception to employers that accidentally or inadvertently become aware of information. Um, but if you're an employer out there, you really shouldn't be asking yeah, people yeah, so anything or about and, and some of the, about this stuff. Now, one of the ways that I've advised clients that this can come in through the back door is wellness. A lot of companies are, are having their employees work out at the gym or, or giving them free counseling about lifting weights and, and eating good eating habits. Reimbursement. And they're encouraging people to talk about these things at lunches and brown bag lunches. And so people are raising their hands and saying, I have a history of this or my... Parents have oh. a history of that. And so the employers are, in a sense, finding out about this information, maybe not for a bad reason, maybe for a good reason, but they are finding out about it. So this is an area of the law that I predict is going to be really hot That's in the next two to ten years is this whole genetic information thing. Another area is um, uh, social networking. Now, we've seen several cases where Somebody gets fired for something they say on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client, an old friend from college, who I saw on Facebook talking bad about his, his company. And I called him up and I said, hey, they may be re reading this. Sure. Um, and some companies have a policy in their handbook saying any kind of disparagement or talking bad about the company uh, can result in your being yes. terminated. Now, the law sure. says that in the National Labor Relations Laws says that union employees, for example, are allowed to organize. So one of the defenses that people are raising to these claims is, hey, I was trying to 
exchange information about my wages and I was complaining about my benefits and therefore that's protected uh, discussion under the National Labor Relations Laws. So again, a very hot area of the law is what people are allowed to say and not say on Facebook. Now what about uh, when they leave uh, signing, should, is it good practice to get a release from the employer or if you're the employer, a release from the employee? And uh, what about their health benefits? Uh, okay, benefits? two different, two good questions. Okay. I'll address the first one first. Uh, when, it, when an employee is fired, what often happens is the employer will give the employee an agreement. And the agreement says something like this. We normally wouldn't give you any severance, but we'd only give you two weeks. But because we're going to give you four weeks, we ask you to sign this release. And what the release is, it's a long list of laws that the employee is agreeing to not sue under. Discrimination and unfair wage practices and so forth. Um, Commissions. Yeah, what's typically what done is the employee asking? under the, these various statutes will be given set, will be given 21 days to review the document and once they sign it they have seven days to revoke it. That's very typical. Not in every case, but it's very typical. Now the employee, my advice is, should only sign that agreement if they're getting something. Some people are asked to sign it they don't get anything. They don't really get anything. It's really not enforceable, but the employee really should, when they get an agreement like that, run it by an attorney to say, mm. hey, uh, and the attorney might say, well, you were entitled to four weeks severance anyway under your handbook. You're really not getting anything. And the attorney is often able to negotiate an increase in the severance package that the employee is getting. The second question you asked was about health insurance. Under the COBRA, we call it, uh, employers are obligated to offer employees the opportunity to stay on the company health plan. I um, think the employee has to pay the full amount, though. Yes. At that point. Um, well, the employer will offer the employee the opportunity after, you know, for 30 days to pick up that obligation. Now, some employers will pay that COBRA payment as part of the settlement agreement, and that's mm -hmm. something that some employees I've been able over the years to negotiate. So, okay, you're giving my employee the right to have COBRA. That's great. How about if you pay for it for six months? That's great. To some of the burden, mm -hmm. that's even better. So uh, employees should make sure that in all the stress and excitement of losing their job, that they don't ignore the fact that they have, they have to do some work to get their health benefits continued or they could get taken off the rolls. One last question before we wrap up. <coughs> what about an employee who has a good reason to think they were discriminated against or terminated unfairly and they decide to pursue legal action? Do they need to fear retaliation from the employer? Is there something protecting them against that? Yes. <coughs> um, if an employee is not fired, but is discriminated against on some other basis. So, for example, not getting a promotion or uh, not getting a good work situation or other, other ways, getting harassed at work. Uh, the employee can go to the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination um, or the employee can complain to the employer about the discrimination. And if the employer retaliates in some way, there are laws that protect the employee against uh, those retaliation claims. Um, you can go to the Massachusetts C Discrimination Commission Against Discrimination, we call it the MCAD, uh, and complain about uh, being retaliated. But the best practical advice that I can give a person in that situation is try to document as much of this stuff as you can. Hmm. I've had clients come to me with sort of these vague stories about things that occurred um, that aren't very well documented, the names, the dates, the times, the, mu the as much information as you can put together as a client, uh, the easier you make your lawyer's job. Uh, you don't need a lawyer to go to the MCAD. In fact, a lot of people go to the MCAD without lawyers. Um, but even if you're going to go yourself, you, you stand a much better chance of pursuing your discrimination claim if you have some kind of proof. You know, you know on, on, we're going into, you've got to be kidding, but one thing that I was saving uh, for something else that you triggered uh, my mind when you said, you know, they're letting them go and uh, how are they going to make money and you negotiate. There's a, um, 
uh, somebody came up with the idea of turning your house <coughs> into a <coughs> billboard. <laughs> and, and if you if you let them put signs all over your house, mm -hmm. uh, then they will make your mortgage payments for a year. <laughs> you're going to be kidding. No, this was in <laughs> California. So if, I like you're, that. if you're if you're out of money, uh, you know maybe you can. I, I don't think you can do that in a suburb. Mm -hmm. but you never know. Oh, here's okay. how you got to be kidding. Here's time for you've got to be kidding. Mm -hmm. We got the right side. Yeah, that's yeah, the, right the right side. side. Yeah, then you've got to be kidding. So what have we got in the bag? Well, okay. So we have one. Oh, okay. This one is, um, it was someone who was in being interviewed for a job, and a, the, the applicant received a phone call on the cell phone, and it was from his wife. And the his side of the conversation um, said uh, that he he responded uh, and which company when do I start and what's the salary so then when you get off the phone the the interviewer said well I assume you're not interested in this job so we shouldn't continue the interview any further oh. and he said well I'm I am as long as you'll pay me more <laughs> <laughs> oh what a good idea that's a good idea that that's uh, I'm not sure I'd fall for that. One. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a good idea. There were there were some where people uh, on their job application. I, I think we had this once before, and it's still popular. It, why are you applying for a job here? Well, I I hear you give a lot of time off the <laughs> sick, and I was planning on <laughs> <and> going away. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then recently, you know, the high cost of college and everything. Yeah. Uh, we, yes. we had that with the loans and everything, and why people yeah. go into bankruptcy. Well, some. Somebody uh, emailed me, have you noticed there's a, a young fellow out there who is encouraging his fellow uh, students, seniors in high school and first year in college to get out of college and learn the hard way, you know, learn by doing things and not get bound up in that college, uh, <laughs> the college loan. I mean, I don't know how he's doing. I don't. But here, here was another job uh, somebody sent me. They're um, looking for extraterrestrial intelligence, and they're <laughs> they got job applications. I don't know how how you could do it. But here, here's here's another one that somebody mm. sent me from Maryland yet, yeah, and the Maryland employment law. Do you know anything about Maryland employment law? Uh, well, it's probably very similar to Massachusetts, <coughs> but I'd love to hear what you have there. This fellow just recently was turned down for unemployment benefits after a judge ruled that he was fired for cause. His employer suffered a massive spill that created a pond of fuel alcohol, and uh, he was a recovering alcoholic. I mean, this, this, is, this is a good one. After resisting <laughs> as long as he could, he gave in, he drank from the pool, <laughs> from the ground, he passed out. And, uh, you know, and they got him before he drove off in anywhere, <laughs> but they just fired him mm -hmm. on the spot. So he's, he's That's an interesting you. one. I mean, yeah. he, he, you could possibly have uh, someone with a disability there. Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah, true. An alcohol, that's true. An alcoholic. That's like sending an alcoholic to the store to buy... Uh, <laughs> uh, to buy some beer or, mm -hmm. or the cigarettes. But anyway, that's, no, that's go what on I got on. on. Oh, I, got, I got so many, many others. Many. The man that ate the hanger. <laughs> Did you see that one? <laughs> uh, the 51 year old man who married the 16 year old girl. <laughs> I won't say anything because that's uh, my age. The range. news would be if the 51 year old woman married the 16 year old girl. <laughs> but, but we're going to uh, wrap it up now. Camille, you do the honors. Well, I want to thank you, Paul, for coming back. Thanks. It, it's, the time just flies when you're here. We have so yes. many more questions. We, we need to hear from you guys because we, this is a, a program where we rely on your emails to help us to determine what kind of topics to have. Because remember, this is your show, The Law, Your Money, and, and You. you.